Well, that's right, Bev. The latest is that we're not clear. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has been travelling around the Arab world to places like Qatar, trying to engineer a humanitarian sort of corridor there um, through the Rafa crossing into Egypt at the southern end of the Gaza Strip. It's clear now that the US President and the Secretary of State are very concerned about what could be the civilian consequences of the coming ground invasion. Things are absolutely desperate in Gaza. Um, the Gazan medics have just, the rescue services have just said that, uh, put out a statement saying that there are hundreds of people buried under the rubble who are still alive, but they believe they now can no longer try to rescue them. They don't have the resources and I think they're also worried about their own safety because this is Gaza City, which is going to be a target of the Israelis. So a very grim statement that they're going to leave those people under the rubble to die, hundreds of them. Um, 6,000 bombs, of course, have dropped there at least in the last eight days. Water's been cut off, food, medicines, the Israelis have cut off all of that. So things are very desperate there. So I think Antony Blinken is very concerned now that America could have on its hands uh, massive ca civilian casualties in the Gaza Strip. Yes. And, you know, to your point, even if this border was opened, uh, is Egypt is saying only dual nationals will be allowed out. There's no guarantee aid is going to be allowed in. A million Gazans are already displaced. It's hard to know how this um, a ground offensive into Gaza is just going to magnify this absolute catastrophe. That's right, Bev. It's a very crowded and small place, as we know. Um, and when Benjamin Netanyahu says this is only the, the beginning, you can understand. And, and the desperation, that convoy yesterday, those cars and trucks doing what the Israelis had told them to do to evacuate and head south, they got hit by an Israeli bomb. 70 people killed then, including the majority of those are women and children. So um, the you know, Doctors Without Borders have said, you know, this is a catastrophe. Uh, what's happening now. Um, the UN has said that the Gaza Strip is falling off into the abyss. So all of these warnings are there. And uh, I'm at the, a hotel in Ashdod, which is one of the launching pads for the Israeli army. There's many soldiers here. Uh, a lot of them headed off last night, I think, to the front line, which is um, the Ashkelon is that way and the Gaza Strip's over there. Um, and there's a couple of soldiers and people who are still here, as you can see behind me, but many of them headed off last mm. night. And the weather has not suited a ground invasion. It hasn't... They, the, the Israelis want to run a lot of it by drone. And so the weather we've had has been really sort of strange and, and foggy and, and rainy, which doesn't suit sort of drone uh, reconnaissance. Yeah. Anthony Blinken is, a, is still in the region. He's back in Tel Aviv today. What is he trying to do with these meetings? Is he trying to delay this ground offensive or is he still trying to push for some sort of diplomatic outcome, which we know the Israelis have said a firm no to? Well, Bev, I think what he wants to do is he wants to be able to announce that there will be a way of people getting out. There will be for dual nationals, for American citizens at least in the Gaza Strip, and some sort of aid or emergency relief coming in. I think that he feels that if he doesn't do that, that Washington will be complicit with anything that Israel does. And obviously the United States has absolutely and completely backed Israel since that, that Hamas invasion last weekend. But I think the Americans now are getting very nervous because it, well, I think we're at a tipping point where it's going from international sympathy for Israel because of the atrocity of what the Hamas fighters did and full support for Israel. And when people are seeing so many civilians dying in Gaza, being buried under the rubble, that the idea that there are people there who are alive, who could be pulled out, but who can't because the, even the medics are wanting to leave. Uh, I think that when these images go around the world, um, it's, it's going to really be a problem for the United States. Yeah. What obligation is there on the, on the Arab side to um, also try and alleviate this position. We know Egypt doesn't want um, a flood of humanity coming into, it, to, into the country because it may be left with the problem itself. That's right. Um, 
Egypt doesn't want to inherit this problem suddenly. They don't want to have a million or two million people coming in from the Gaza Strip. Um, the Gaza Strip has long been a problem for, the, for Egypt as well because they've seen it as a breeding ground of, of Islamic um, fundamentalists, of, of, of Hamas. In Egypt, of course, the al-Sisi sort of military government, or, or he's an ex-military leader, they have had their own battles with the Muslim Brotherhood who are aligned with Hamas. So they don't want to have to solve this problem. So the Arab world is now trying to work out what do we do? If the Israelis go in and essentially occupy it, do they then try to get a sort of a UN brokered um, a, a temporary administration in there? Um, does it then become a bit like Baghdad, which sort of becomes unwieldy and ungovernable, and we then go into 10 or 20 years of insurgencies like we've had in Baghdad uh, or in Kabul? So uh, it's a real problem. What do the Israelis want? when they, If they do get into Gaza City and take it, what happens then? And that's the question, I think, that, that is worrying Anthony Blinken, who's actually here at the moment. He's arrived in Israel about an hour ago, having more talks with Benjamin Netanyahu. So I think um, once that's done, once the corridor is opened, if it is opened, then I think the Israelis will launch their ground invasion. Yeah, a very dangerous point in this conflict. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, as always. Thank you.